So when we look at today, we're looking at arithmetic sequences and series, or not really series, but arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. So yesterday we talked about arithmetic sequences. Well, I want someone to remind me, I think we said at least a couple times to say what it actually meant to be an arithmetic sequence. When is the sequence arithmetic? Victoria? There we go. So when we have the same repeat, so it's repeated addition or subtraction. All right, so that's the phrase I want you guys to remember. Repeated addition or subtraction. And then this little piece right here, that amount that you're adding or subtracting by, that is basically your common difference. Okay, so the common difference is actually exactly that. It's, okay, let's think about it like this. Uh, in mathematics, when we say the difference between, what are we really meaning to say? We say the, the difference between three and five. Um, you're subtracting. You're subtracting. So we're talking about the common difference. It's the amount that you're subtracting by throughout all the terms. And we represent that with the letter D. So D for difference. So D is your common difference. Again, it's the same thing as whatever you're adding or subtracting by. So again, if we are arithmetic, we're adding and subtracting by the same amount on every single term. So we look at the bottom two of the problems, or sequences. Are they arithmetic? So let's look at the first one. How much am I increasing by the first one? So I have three, five, seven, and nine. So Lucas, yeah, I'm adding two every time. And since that's a consistent amount, we call that the common difference. So yes, this is definitely arithmetic. Even though the problem doesn't ask for it, I want you guys to tell me, then what is my common difference? Two. When you're trying to come up with the equations for arithmetic and geometric sequences, it's really important that you take the time to identify the common difference. All right, what about the next example? 2, 4, 8, and 16. Four. Well, how much am I adding here? Four. 2, and then 4, and then 8. Is that increasing by the same amount? No. No, so is that arithmetic? No. Nope. That's not arithmetic. So when we think about arithmetic, there are two formulas that you need to be aware of. We have an explicit formula for arithmetic sequences, and then we have recursive formulas. Or the recursive formula gives you the next term based on the previous term. And so that's what we're kind of seeing here where the a sub n minus 1. Or that's your previous term. So we're increasing the previous term by d, with d being our common difference. Now you guys remember yesterday we had a couple of sequences where we noticed that they were linear. You guys remember doing that yesterday? We're, like we, we're going up by two every single time. And we had to somehow manipulate the equation to get out of something. Uh, and so basically that's I think one of them was like 6n. And he has to subtract like some random amount, 17, to get to work out right. Well, what we can use here 
is this explicit formula. Right through here, there's your explicit formula. And that will work for you for any arithmetic sequence. A sub one plus n minus one times d. That's how we'll set them up. So there at the bottom, I'm asking you guys to do two things. I want you to write an explicit and a recursive. So if we have the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so forth. What would be my recursive formula for that sequence? A is 2? B is 2. Okay, good. So we know that our D is 2. Okay, so we're going to increase my 2 every time. All right, so how do I set this up? A sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus the d. And then you also tell then with what? Where are we starting at? With a sub 1 equal to 2. So there's our recursive formula. All right, let's try recursive for the next one. 9, 4, negative 1, negative 6, negative 11, negative 16, and so forth. What is my common difference on this problem? Five. What do you mean by five? Like, you're kind of like this five. Kind of, you're really close, Brie. Sean, you're being negative five. It's negative five. Because you're subtracting five. Yeah. <coughs> so that part actually makes a big difference. We want to make sure that the common difference is the negative five. Because we're subtracting five every time. All right. So Kirsten, you're going to help me write this out. Using recursive formula. So right up here, that's your little template. Okay, so how do I start writing this out? <coughs> Minus five, and then we gotta tell where to start. What does it equal? Oh, nine. Nine. So with a sub one equal to nine. Okay, so that's recursive, right? That's actually a little more difficult and definitely a lot more to write with recursive than it is to do an explicit. Same concept, this time we're going to go with the explicit. So we start off with the same thing, right? A sub n, name the nth term. Now notice here, we start off with a sub 1. So when we look at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, what is my first term? 2 plus n minus 1, <clears throat> and then what's my common difference? And so you can rewrite this as 2 plus 2 times minus 1. And you can leave it in that form. Now we don't need to go through with distributing and then combine like terms, you leave it just like that. Okay, so I want you guys to take, well, maybe less than a minute, work with your partner. I want you guys to come up with the explicit formula for that problem. Okay, Jake, what you come up with? I got an equal to nine. Do we agree? Yeah. So this is your a sub 1. 
plus your D times N minus 1. So everything fits. All right, any questions on writing all the equations before we go forward? You know, geometric sequence,